गुड इवनिंग एंड वेलकम टू द ब्लैक होल पिछले माह हमने आपसे वादा किया था कि हर महीने की पहली फ्राइडे को हमारे साथ होंगे डॉक्टर सरमद अबासी एंड वी आर वेरी वी आर वेरी ग्रेटफुल टू हिम कि वो आज हंसपे वादा हमारे साथ मौजूद है आज के लेक्चर का अनुमान है टॉप ट्रेडिंग साइकिल एंड इंट्रोडक्शन टू एल्गोरिथमिक गेम थ्योरी अगर आप इस अनुमान से घबराने लगे हैं तो इसकी बिल्कुल कोई ज़रूरत नहीं है क्योंकि अगर आप टेंथ ग्रेड मैथमेटिक्स जानते हैं तो आप इस लेक्चर को बा आसानी समझ सकेंगे आ, एक शॉर्ट इंट्रोडक्शन भी मैं दे देता जाऊं डॉक्टर सरमद अबासी का आप तहकीक और दरसो तदरीस से वाबस्ता हैं और ये कि मैथ कैट नामी इनिशिएटिव है आपका विच इज़ डेडिकेटेड टू मेकिंग वीडियोस दैट डिस्कस मैथमेटिक्स इन अ फन एंड इजी टू अंडरस्टैंड वे और उसकी झलक हमें आज के लेक्चर में भी दिखाई देगी तो इससे पहले कि हम इस सेशन का आगाज़ करें प्लीज़ अपने सेल जो हैं वो आप साइलेंट मोड में कर दें आप गुफ्तु में शरीक हो सकते हैं कहीं भी आपको कोई पॉइंट समझना हो या कोई इजाफा करना हो या कुछ भी कहना हो बस उसके लिए एक काम कीजिएगा कि काइंडली रेज योर हैंड और माइक्रोफोन अपने हाथ में आने के बाद आप अपनी बात कीजिएगा डॉक्टर सर अहमद अबासी बहुत शुक्रिया अब आपके हवाले स्टेज थैंक यू ओके सो लिटल बिट अबाउट दिस टॉपिक सो आई आई एम नॉट एल्गोरिदमिक गेम थियोरिस्ट एंड I'm never uh, taken a formal course in it, but the 2018 uh, Rolf Navalina Prize, which is a big award in computer science, was given to an algorithmic game theorist, and that was very refreshing. So then I, I started reading about it, and then there is also one friend of mine who is uh, doing wonderful work in algorithmic game theory. so it would you know i'll introduce a little bit of his work his work is a is a lot of fun also but this particular thing i chose because i wanted to teach something with you know which i can do in an hour so it didn't have to be very difficult but there should be certain applications and people should feel that it's closely related to their lives okay so the the algorithm is called top trading cycle and it was invented by so uh, the, it was invented by david gale okay david gale right and there are david gale is an amazing person you know he he died so uh, before i think uh, the nobel prize was uh, conferred in his subject otherwise if he would have been alive he would have certainly been uh, a recipient of it so eventually that award went to lloyd Shapley and uh, Roth so two algorithmic game theorists really big names and this particular top trade trading cycle algorithm the story that i've heard i don't know whether it's it's really true that david gale may, met lloyd shapley in a corridor and shapley told him the problem and by the time they had crossed the corridor actually david gale had told him the algorithm Okay. all right and somehow you know shapley sat on it for a while um, didn't really think about it okay and so i think probably gale had expired so he wrote the paper with another uh, mathematician uh, herb what's let me get the names right scarf okay so uh, and uh, l Shapley. Okay, and so they both wrote the paper, but of course, you know, these people are are so amazing, and you know, they have no, uh, they 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 extremely ethical people. And in the paper, they give the credit. Even if you go to Wikipedia, it says that the algorithm was developed by uh, David Gale. So you know, the right credit has been. given so what does this algorithm do and what are the applications so let's set up the scenario what we have so what you have is some number of people and they so i will say it in three ways okay nazar aa rahe hain i'll i'll explain it in three ways so what you can do is you can have a student one who has been assigned a room 1 and you have a student 2 who has been assigned room number 
and student three who has been assigned room number three. Or you can think of this as houses, people living in these houses. But the thing is that student one may not really like his room, okay? All right, he may prefer room two for various reasons. It's closer to his department or whatever. And student two may actually like their room better, right? So in this case, what they can do is they can trade these rooms. You know, these guys can exchange the rooms and there is no money involved and everybody benefits. Nobody is worse off, okay? When you have a situation like that, that in economics, then economists will say, there is no cost associated to, to this kind of trading and, and some people are benefiting. So let's go ahead and do that. We're not hurting anyone. All right. So that's so you can you are exchanging rooms, you know, you, you just exchange rooms. Another example that is very, very important, and that is a spectacular example, uh, which is what you have is instead of these students. These are patients, okay, patient number four, and each patient, so you know, these idiots have ruined their kidneys, you know, they probably had a very bad lifestyle, so they need a kidney donor. So everyone has a donor, you know, so if I, for example, uh, ruin my kidney, you know, uh, then maybe my sister, and uh, I'm sure my sister will, will be willing to give her kidney to me, all right? So, because she loves me and that's how sisters are, you know, she may be very angry that I ruined it, but, you know, she would do that for me. So, but what can happen is maybe your blood type doesn't match. So, although I have a donor, you know, if we do that, if we do perform that surgery, okay, the chances of rejection are pretty high, okay? So, in that case, I have, many patients and each one has a donor, okay? So what we can do is we can exchange donors now, all right? So that everybody benefits, all right? So that problem stems from this problem, top trading cycle, but it is slightly more complicated. The algorithm eventually that is developed is slightly more complicated because there are some other features you have to add so to, to that. but let me tell you that in the US, 10% of people are going through this now, of the uh, donations, kidney donations are going through the kidney exchange programs. All right, and it's really making a difference in people's lives. Okay, it's, uh, it's, it's uh, and um, you know the, well, I'll tell you the longest chain that, that happened. So let's look at the problem, formulate it and see the solution of it. And then we can talk more. <clears throat> okay. I hate to do this to this wonderful artwork, but you know. Huh? Uh, okay, all right. So here is the input. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12 people here, okay? I will explain you the input, but let me give you another example. Uh, suppose you can think of these children, right? And each child having a candy, all right? But somehow you don't prefer the candy you're given. You prefer somebody else's candy, all right? And in that case, you can exchange, all right? So um, now, Okay, so this is the input, you know, there is more input here which I haven't written because somehow that would not be very relevant uh, when in this example. So here is patient number one, okay, and he prefers or his match, per best match is donor number nine, okay, the ninth donor. And this is patient number two, his best uh, uh, match is with donor number 11. And the second best match is with donor number one, the third best is with donor number five. So you know, what these doctors do, do is they take all the patients and all the donors and do a test and rank them, okay? So 
I mean, the best thing that will happen for four is if he gets the donor 12's kidney. All right? Okay? Okay, so our input is this, right? And what is going to be our output? We are going to have one, two, three, four, five. Let me just think of this as five. Otherwise, it'll be a very big example. And a solution would be something like patient one gets third donor, uh, patient two maybe gets fourth donor, patient four gets first donor, patient uh, two, three gets second donor, and patient five gets his or her own donor, right? Okay, so this would be a solution. And we would want to get some kind of an optimal solution, some kind of a solution which is good for everybody, all right? So how many possible outputs are there? Hmm? Four into four. Five into five. Um, no, no, no. The, the output. The input is five into five. Yeah, that I that I agree. The output. What is my output? How many possible outputs are there? Okay. In other words, this is what is called a matching. You know, I match things one to one. How many matchings are there? No, 5 into 4 into... Thank you. 5 factorial. 5 factorial. So for the first one, you have 5 choices. For the second one, you have 4 choices. Third one, you have 3 choices, 2. And then for the last one, you have only 1 choice. So that's 5 times 4 times. So, it's, it's, uh, so in this case, there are 12 factorial possible outputs. Okay, so if you have 20 people, there will be 20 factorial outputs. Just to... Uh, tell you how large of a number this is, 20 factorial is something like 2.4 quintillion. Okay, 2.4 quintillion. So you have billions, then you have trillions, then you have quadrillions, and then you have quintillions. Okay, so it's, it's huge number of possibilities that, uh, so your search space is very huge. Okay, all right. So, David Gale came up with a method of uh, doing all of this. So let's, let's see his method, okay. okay. I have prepared this so that it doesn't get too ugly. Because if you throw things randomly, then Okay, all right, so let me number them. Okay, so th this is one, nine, uh, 11, three, eight, 10, two, uh, seven, six, five, uh, 12, and four. Okay, so let me tell you how did I make this graph. Okay, so what I went, uh, so this is called a directed graph because they're arrows. So what I did, went, did was I went to one and I said, who's one's top choice? Okay, it's nine. So I said one's top choice is nine. What's two's top, cho two's top choice? 11, right? What's three's top choice? Eight. What's four's top choice? 12, okay. What is five's top choice? Eight. Eight. Six's top choice is five. And seven's top choice is six. Okay, so just from there. Eight's top choice is nine. Uh, ten's top choice is two. Eleven's top choice is three. And twelve's top choice is three. Okay, all right. So what I do is I go to the top choice of every person, okay? And what do you notice here? Only has one top choice, 12. 12 is the only top choice for 
Uh, yeah. So everyone will have one top choice. Right? Yes, one top choice, but no one else needs twelve. Only four needs it. Therefore, you can let four and twelve immediately. Ah. Uh, okay. So what does twelve get then? No, no that uh, I'm not talking about uh, patient twelve. I'm talking about donor twelve. Four gets donor twelve because no one else needs donor twelve as their f top or second choice. Okay. All right. But okay. So you're suggesting an algorithm, right? You're saying that this guy. But uh, same is the case with six. Some have more than two arrows. Six has them. one arrow going in. Five mm -hmm. also has one arrow going in. Okay. Eight uh, two and also have. Three and five both need eight. Uh -huh. And nine and two uh -huh. both need eleven. Uh -huh. Okay. So, all right. So, so good, good, good. So you're trying to develop an algorithm. So you're saying, in this case, we should go ahead and give four twelve. Right, but what about what do we do with twelve? You know, uh, so the thing is, the problem is that. Uh, so you see, what the problem is, we'll have to give something to twelve also in return. Yes, but uh, thankfully you have given us more than uh, more than only the one top choice. We have the second uh, best alternative and third best alternative. We can also use them. Yeah, we yeah yeah. The idea is uh, using them. So shall I tell you David Gale's idea? Okay, uh, and then you can think about why uh, his idea is maybe slightly better or not. Huh? Okay, so what I am assuming that the first column consists of patients and then s second, third and fourth column consists of donors. No, so right now you think about patient donor and if I've written one here, this is patient one, donor one. Okay. So, patient and donor come as pairs, okay. right? So, what this is saying for patient one, nine is their best, don donor number nine is the best, donor number 16 is the second best, donor number three is the third best. That's right. And then, in the same column, this nine is again a patient, uh, the nine which is... Donor, donor. Okay, and uh, just diagonally left uh, this one. This is patient. This is patient. Huh. His top choice is 11, 3, 4. Agar, haan, upar agar, patient or second top choice. Uh -huh. so. This is, thank you. Patient, top, uh, second top, uh, and so on. Okay. So, like patient 2 and donor 2 are two different people? Uh, yes, they are different people. Okay. Yeah, they, yeah, they are different people, but they are somehow, you can say they have already agreed. Okay. All right. So it would be, say, my sister who says, okay, I'll give you my kidney. Mm -hmm. Okay. So in some sense, she's tied to me. She doesn't have the same emotions for everybody else. Yes. Okay. Right. Okay. So the thing is, if she would agree to give her kidney to somebody else, yes. she would only do that if I get a better kidney than hers. Okay. Otherwise, you know, she wouldn't be interested. Yes. Okay. So that's the idea. Right. Thank okay. you. All right. Okay. So David Gill's uh, idea was make this graph. All right. And this graph will always have what is called a cycle. And you can see the cycle. Okay. All right. And the question is, of course, why would this graph always have a cycle? Okay, so let's see what kind of a graph it is. It is a graph in which every vertex has an arrow coming out of it. One, exactly one arrow coming out of it. Okay, now you prove to me that it will have a cycle. Yeah. Because there will always be two people who want the same donor. If not, then you can say that there will be no cycle. No, no, no. Uh, what I'm saying is no matter what choices are here, whatever graph I'll make, there will always be a cycle in it. Okay? Okay? To the same point. Yeah, there's always be a cycle. And here's the argument. Pick any vertex. Okay, and keep going forward following the arrows. Yes. Since there is an arrow going out of every vertex, you will never get stuck. If you will never get stuck, that means you could go on 
forever. But how could you go on forever without repeating yourself? So you must repeat yourself and that's where, yeah, that's where you have found. Infinite chain or yeah, then it's not that, then it's a repeated cycle of people. So you, because, and the reason is because there are finitely many patients. There are finitely many vertices in the graph and there is nothing stopping you from going forward. You always have an arrow going forward. So if you keep doing that, you'll start repeating yourself and that's it. So like if you, if you, if your sister is, is, has agreed to give your, your, her kidney to any other person, then you should also get a kidney from any other person. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's why he's looking for a cycle. All right. So uh, let me, shall I do a little bit of computer science now uh, rather than algorithmic game theory? So the question is, how do you find a cycle in the graph? Okay. How to find a cycle in the graph? And... You know, I really love teaching this. Uh, okay. All right. So you guys know who uh, who this guy is? Everybody knows who this guy is. You know, he, he's a he's what the fastest man in the world, right? Fastest yeah, fastest mentor. And do you guys know who this is? That's me, right? So let's say me, I start uh, running, okay? And Usain Bolt is next to me, right? And you know, he's, I say, hi Usain, and I start running. And a little while later, I meet him again. Oh, what would that mean? <laughs> We're going in circles, right? He, <laughs> that's the only way for me to meet him again, okay? All right, and that's called Floyd's cycle finding algorithm. Okay, so let me write down the algorithm for you. So what you do is you say Sarmad and you set it to any vertex V of your graph. And uh, Bolt starts at the same vertex, right? And now I uh, take one step. Okay, and Bolt takes two steps. Okay, all right, and then this says while uh, is not equal to Bolt. Okay, and you copy these two statements over here. Okay. Uh, all right. So when we meet again, we are on the cycle. And then you can just output that cycle. So that's a lovely algorithm, right? The beauty of this algorithm is it uses absolutely no extra memory. You know, just two variables. So constant memory it uses, regardless of how big the graph is. So you, don't, you can do it with almost no extra memory, right? And so it is very applicable in other areas also. For example, in number theory, you know, the Pollard row algorithm uses, uses this, uh, okay? All right. So let's say you, we, can, we can run the algorithm over here. Uh, let's, say, let's say Bolt is purple and I am white, right? So after one step, he will be here, okay? And I will be here, right? And after two steps, he will be here. And I would have just reached here, right? And now he'll start catching up on me because I'll reach here and he reaches there. And then we, he, you know, meet again. All right. And we know we are on a cycle. Okay. All right. Uh, there's a problem with this analogy. Okay, I think Bolt is about five times faster than me. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so that could be a problem, right? Because you know, he'll jump over me in the algorithm, you know, we may never meet again in the algorithm, okay? But in real life, of course, I'll see him zip past me. So let's say I'm half his speed, okay? I'll, 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 I can live with half his speed, okay? All right, so we got that. Okay, 
So how to find the cycles? Well, here's a little program that will do it for you. And now when you have found this cycle, what you do is you come up with a partial solution. You say, uh, okay, this is one, two, three. So three will get one, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, ten, eleven. Okay. Uh. The last one here, uh, just a little patience. Okay, all right. So three gets eight's donor's kidney, all right, and eight gets nines. Okay, and nine gets elevens, all right, and eleven gets. Uh, threes. Okay, all right. And now you can perform these surgeries, right? And all these four people are happy because they got all they got their top choice. So, you know, three's sister will gladly give her kidney to eight, patient number eight, because her brother is getting a better kidney than, right? Okay, all right. And so, what do you do after this? Thank you, thank you. So what you do is essentially you go and remove these people from the problem and now you have the same problem again. Okay, all right. So what you do is you say, okay, you guys are done. Go away. Okay, all right. And now look, some of their some of the people's top choice is still available. Six's top choice is still av available, but five's is not. So you go to five. Okay, let's do it. Let's go to one. Nine is gone. So now eight. Uh, who wrote sixteen there? This is supposed to be. Uh, this is supposed to be something else. Ah, this is supposed to be a 10, okay? <laughs> it became a 16. Yeah, so a 1 goes and it, you add this edge, 2 ka, uh, 11 is gone, one. so, so two, 1 goes there, uh, right? And 5 ka kaha ja hai? 8. 9. nine. nine. One pija. Okay. And yeah, that's and twelve ka bhi kahi jana chahi na? Three pija. Two pija. Two pija. Two pija. Two pija. Okay. All right. So what happens again? You are again guaranteed, right, that this graph will have a cycle. Okay. So you take that cycle and what I say is you process it. By processing it meaning 2 gets 10's kidney, uh, 10 so gets, two gets one's kidney oh 2 gets 1's kidney, oh god, yeah, yeah, 2 gets 1's kidney and 1 gets 10's kidney and 10 gets 2's kidney. Can't we say that 4 gets 12's kidney? Uh, <laughs> We'll have to do, do uh, processing, na? so we just have to follow the algorithm. So now we get rid of, uh, rid of this, okay, and we update the choices. So now, to, so 12. 12 was unlucky, 3 bhi chala gaya, 2 bhi chala gaya, 9 bhi chala gaya. His next option is now 4. So 12 does get 4's uh, kidney. So 12 and 4 
exchange. All right, so this is 12 and uh, 4, right? And then finally, if you process this, then uh, this becomes a cycle, so you can remove this. Okay, so that's the algorithm. That's the top trading cycle algorithm. All right? You are assuming that there will always, you are assuming that there will always be like a suitable enough patient to give. Like the okay. chain will continue. Okay. So so uh, there are the thing is. Typically, if I were teaching a computer science course, I will ask the question, how much time this algorithm takes? Okay? And it's n squared. You know, uh, you can easily prove that it's n squared. But in algorithmic game theory, the questions that you're asking are totally different. Okay? The question is not about, not this quantitative question of how long does this take, but you're more interested in the quality of your answers. Okay? All right? So, um, the thing is, is this solution good? Optimal. Is it optimal? In what sense is, is it optimal? Okay, what are the properties it has? Yeah, so, so does it always give us a complete solution? Number one, you know, that's the question we're asking. Number two is, would I be interested in going for this kidney exchange? If say it was, if, if it were possible that I get a worse kidney than the, my donors, I'll never go into such a program, right? Because I have my donor, right? And in, if, if by going in the program I, I get hurt, I will never go for this thing, right? And the question is, how good is this solution? So let's answer these questions. Okay, so let's think about a few properties uh, <clears throat> All right. Okay. Um, okay. So first property is that when you make this graph, it will have a cycle. It can have more than one cycles also, but these cycles can never overlap. Okay. All right, why is it that they cannot overlap? Let's say you have one cycle, okay? And let's say the second cycle overlaps. Then it has to go along with this cycle and at some point change, right? Okay, but then this vertex has two edges coming out of it and that's not possible. Okay, so when you look at the structure of this graph, it's a bunch of disjoint cycles, all right, and then vertices leading to them, okay, all right, okay, agree, right, so there will be no overlapping cycles. The second thing is once a cycle is created, okay, the only way to get rid of it is to process it. Okay, you know, do those donations, remove that, all right? Because remember that if you don't process this cycle and process this cycle, their best choices are still available. So this cycle remains intact there, okay? All right, because these vertices were choosing these donors, right? Okay, so if I process this cycle and remove these, Okay, only these vertices will change their arrows. So this cycle remains intact. Okay, so once a cycle is created, it must be processed. Okay, now here is the observation. This is patient number one, let's say I'm patient number one. And I go down, there must be at some point donor number one here also. Okay, so as my, I'm going down the list, Eventually, what will happen is either I'll get some donor before that or I will come to my own donor. When I come to my own donor, I have a cycle. All right? And therefore, it must be processed. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. So that means everybody will give a donor. And nobody will get a worse donor than their own. 
they will not go beyond that list they won't go down the list actually ordered list so yeah yeah ordered yeah yeah okay all right so this has a beautiful property that if you enroll in the kidney exchange program you can't do worse than than what your current situation is the you know in the worst case you will just not it won't benefit you or you will get something something better okay so that's a very nice property you know that there is no reason not to join the program you can it can only help you can't hurt you right so okay so that's that's a very nice property uh, let me also do one more property of this okay all right so we are usually we are very uh you know usually we work with numbers right and numbers have this very nice property that uh they are well ordered okay so if you you have the law of trichotomy if you have two numbers uh either both of them are equal or one is smaller than the other or or the other way around right so a and b a is less than b a is is greater than b or a is equal to b so there's a total ordering but in life total orderings are not there most of the time okay um, it's not always possible to totally order things so mathematicians work with something called a uh, partial order okay so let me give you one very simple example of what a partial order is so suppose you have three elements and you look at all the subsets so then you have the empty set and a and b and c and then you have ab uh ac and bc and you have abc and you can look at the subset relationship and that's a partial order okay empty set is a subset of all these three this is a subset of this and this but not of that this is a subset of this and this but not of this this is a subset of this and this is a subset of this 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 right but if you look at these two sets somehow the subset relationship can't compare them okay you know a is in Uh, this set is not a subset of that and neither is that of that so in a par partial order you have all the other properties but sometimes things are not comparable okay sometimes things are not comparable some things are some things aren't okay so that's why it's called a partial order okay so now let me explain to you a concept which game theorists use it's called pareto optimality okay all right so pareto optimality is like a partial order okay all right so let me give you an example and explain it to you uh if i can find it otherwise i'll have to cook one up oh huh. hmm. yeah i got okay so let's go back to our our original problem right and let's say we have a problem with five patients okay right so we have patient 1 2 3 4 and 5 okay all right so in one solution they get a donor okay and this could be let's say 3 4 2 1 of uh, five okay all right and this three was number third on one's list two was second on one's list uh two uh, four was second on one's list three was first okay four was second and this was also second okay all right so this guy got his first choice second choice second choice second choice and third choice all right this is one solution s1 let's call it and let's look at another solution 
all right? And the first column is not really that important, okay? Uh, what is important is the second column. In this, this guy got the third, third, second, second, and second, okay? All right, so let's see. Is one happier here or here? Same. It's, it's the same. Is four happier, two happier here or here? Here. Is three happier here or here? Here. Four? Same. Same. Okay. Five? Same. Same. Okay. All right. So what is happening is either people are equally happy in both solutions or they are happier in S1. Okay. So in this case, we say S1 is Pareto dominant on S2. What you can think about it is S1 is better than S2. All right, because what is happening is everybody is at least as happy as they were before. And in the new situation, some of them are, you know, doing even better off. Okay. All right. So what we would want the, that our algorithm should at least um, come up with a solution that is Pareto optimal. Okay. All right. Uh, what if, for example, we say huh. that to what if we, for example, put it in the values uh, that we have a uh, first a uh, best can uh, best donor, second best donor. So what if we say that sec three second best donors are greater than first best donor. Okay. In this case, then the algorithm become way more complicated. Yes. Because you have way more uh, solutions. Yes. Yes. Uh, you know you uh, so so actually kidney exchange is is a little more complicated, and because so what happens in in science is. You start, and this physicists always, always do, you start with some meaningful idea, and usually it doesn't perfectly uh, sit on a practical problem, because the practical problem has other uh, details. And then so you start adding details, right? And then, you know, finally, uh, hopefully you can still solve the problem. But the heart of the problem is usually typically very, kept very simple. Okay, so people do, uh, so you know, you just think about it, if, if there is one and there is two, and let's say the doctors say your, your, your best option will give you 98% chances of survival, all right, only 2% chances of rejection, and your second choice will give you 97%, okay, all right, but the second guy here has 98%, and all of a sudden, his second drops to 60%. Okay? All right? So now, you will want to do something. Uh, you know, you'd say, well, you know, this guy, he almost has two top choices. So let's give this patient a priority. Right? So these kind of consideration can come in. Okay? Now, in the US, kidney exchange is happening. Okay? And, uh, you know... Uh, a slightly different algorithm is used because there are other issues over there. And the longest cycle that they had was 20 people. 20 people. So, you know, that to me is so fascinating. The 20 donors being exchanged and everybody does better. You know, that's, that's, that's something. Okay. All right. So, this, in this case, I will say S1 is Pareto better than S2. Here's another example. So, let's make another S3. Okay. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. This is three, two, one, two, one. And it's the thing on this side. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. And this is one, two, two, one, three. Okay? So this is better here. Okay, and four is also better here. Right? He gets second option here, he gets first, and all that. But on the other hand, 3 is better here and 5 is better here. Okay? Alright? So, this is S3. 
three, and let's say this is S4. What will we say about S3 and S4? Pareto incomparable. Incomparable. That Pareto ideas do not tell me which is better. I have to do some, you know. Huh, this is a partial ordering. So they are not comparable. Okay. But so what we want is a Pareto optimal algorithm. All right. And my last task is to prove to you, no, second last task, if you allow me, <laughs> is to prove to you that this top trading cycle algorithm is Pareto optimal. Okay, so typically the proofs go like this. I claim this is Pareto optimal. And you know, Suhail would say, no. no. Okay, <laughs> and then we go from there. All right. <laughs> Okay, so here is, uh, let's say, Gale's solution. All right. Okay. And here is Suhail, who is saying no. Uh, so Suhail's counterexample. Okay. Okay. So, all right. So, Suhail has to do better than Gale, at least on one patient. Okay. If he can manage to do that, then Gale's solution would not be Pareto optimal. Okay. And now listen to this carefully. So, the first thing I ask Suhail is, Suhail, when the algorithm started, you know, and I process the first cycle, okay, all those guys in the first cycle, okay, they got their top choice, okay. So this guy got the top choice, this guy got the top choice, okay, and this guy got the top choice. Let's say the cycle was of size 3, okay. So what choice are you going to give them? Well, if he gives them lower than that, the, 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 he's dead. He's dead, right? Because he's Pareto, he's, he's either Pareto uh, uh, worse than me or it would be incomparable with me. So to these, he has no choice. So to them, he gives top choice. Okay. And now Suhail, finish the proof for me. And then once these are removed, yeah. Once these are removed, then we are left with the remaining items. Uh, yeah. And and then I claim again that I have something better. Yeah. And so second cycle, let's let's make that uh, blue. Okay. So, all right. Okay. So these guys got their top choices, not from the original people set, but from minus cycle one, okay? But see, it's the top choice amongst these. But Suhail doesn't have cycle available also. <laughs> you know, he has already told me he's going, okay? So he has no choice but to give them that their top choice. And you know, the proof. This goes on and on and in the end, okay, so it is Pareto optimal, okay, all right, it's a very beautiful proof, Pareto it's Pareto optimal, optimal. yeah. Uh -huh. So there must, be, must also be a threshold for uh, giving either to give all, uh, either to give a person his top choice at any cost, cost like uh, uh, greater than 60 percent or 50 uh, percent. Okay, so look, one of the things in game theory, there's a very, uh, uh, very important thing, there are lots of problems, there's a concept of what we call symmetry, all right? So symmetry essentially means that, that the names of the people, their identities are not important. The answers should not depend on them, okay? So for example, in the US, kidney exchange is legal, but exchange of money is not allowed. 
you know that is you go to jail you know you try to buy a kidney they they'll throw you in jail okay, okay? all right so uh, this, this this symmetry concept is very important that that the algorithm should be immune to who is what okay but from the data maybe doctors can uh, you know give priority for example sometimes it is ethical to give priority right mm -hmm. suppose if there is a waiting list uh, right and so somebody who applied early you know would be very upset if you knock them off the waiting list right so yeah there are these other considerations also yeah but but these things are being used you know okay all right so one last thing and proof but that's a and and the reason i'm doing that proof is uh, because uh, it once again metaphorically it's so beautiful okay and i'm not going to do a proof I'm going to give you something that can be turned into a proof by a half decent mathematician, you know, okay, which is, is it possible for a person to change their preferences, all right, not give their true preferences in order to fool the system? Hmm? Hmm. I would say not in this example because a kidney exchange is too much of a you know serious topic to fool the system. You, you, well, pe evil people are everywhere. You know, the human evil is something which, like, uh, you know, we uh, there are very nasty people in the world. So you want your systems to be uh, robust, okay? So the question is, does this algorithm have that robustness that if somebody tries to cheat it, you know? They'll probably be worse off. It will not be optimal. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so the so they won't be able to get a better kidney. Okay. Let's say I was getting my sixth choice, mm -hmm. but if I somehow change my my uh, ordering, I, I end up getting my fourth choice. All right. So then there'll be incentive for me to lie, right? And the, uh, and the and the uh, and the proof is, says that. In the, you can't fool this algorithm. You'll hurt yourself. <laughs> because you need uh, more information about other patients? Well, uh, we will see the proof in that even you, you are, the person is, uh, it has all the information of all the other patients. Yeah, okay? Yeah. Yeah, okay? And let me show you the, the basic idea. So, so, the proof, I'm going to write uh, one line for the proof. It's a beautiful time. It's never a good time to cheat. Okay? All right? So let's say that there is a person who wants to fool the system. Okay. And let's look at the algorithm, all right? Okay. Okay, so let's say this is the black sheep, okay? Obviously, if the black sheep is on the cycle, then they're not going to cheat. They're getting a good kidney, right? Okay. All right, so they are going to cheat when they're not on the cycle. All right, let's say they decide to cheat. So they want to create a cycle, okay? They want to create a cycle so that they will get that option. All right, but they can only create the cycles with people who are leading to them. Right, because if they, if they go here, they don't create a cycle, so they won't be processed anyway. If they go, uh, if they you know choose, uh, you know some some other guy, you know they don't create a cycle. They only create a cycle to the people who are reaching to the blue one. Okay, so if they don't wait, if they don't cheat now, they wait. It is possible that this set gets bigger. It can't get smaller. <laughs> okay. All right, so rather than getting some kidney from here, they also will have a good shot at this person, right? So it's never a good time to cheat. 
that's it. That's the proof. Uh, Alice? So, okay. Oh, why is it that they can't come inside the cycle? I couldn't get that. The, see, because he, other persons he, were so, not cheating and they were. So, look, the blue guy, okay. What does it mean to cheat? He will, instead of giving us this arrow, he'll give us some fake arrow. Yes. Okay? So if he gives us this fake arrow, that doesn't help. Okay? Because he didn't create a cycle, you know, the algorithm just ignores him and processes goes away. Uh, if he gives us this arrow, the, the same thing happens. Because the other people yeah. are... Uh, yeah. But, so he has to give an arrow which has a path coming to him. Only those are candidate uh, uh, the kidneys he can grab, okay? But that set in the next round will only get bigger. It won't get smaller, okay? So in this round, he has lesser candidates pointing to him. In the next one, he'll have more. So right now, it's not a good time to cheat. And so in the second round, it's not a good time to cheat. And you know, the argument just goes on. That's huh? Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, share, share, yeah? No, it's not yet. Okay, so let's do one last attempt. Okay? All right. Sometimes, okay. This person's true choice is this. Okay, right? Now, this cycle process... साइकिल उसका तब तभी बनेगा जब वो उसके जो पीछे वाले एरोज हैं वो उसकी तरफ पॉइंट करेंगे वो तो समझ आ गई फिर आप कह रहे हैं कि जो साइकिल गेट्स बिगर उससे उसके बाद नहीं समझ आ उसके बाद कि बिगर का क्या मतलब है देखो अब अब द कैंडिडेट्स दैट ही कैन ग्रैब अ किडनी फ्रॉम आर ये ग्रीन वंस की तरफ करेगा तो साइकिल बनेगा ना अच्छा देखो यहाँ से अगर इसने ये करके फेक एरो ये दे दिया तो ये साइकिल बन गया ना तो हो सकता है एल्गोरिथम इसको प्रोसेस करके इसको दे दे वो तो उस तरफ पॉइंट कर रहा है ना वो तो उससे ले रहा है हाँ तो अब वो चीट करने की कोशिश कर रहा है ना सो नाउ ही इ Okay, all right. So this way he can try to grab this person's kidney, right? No, his first choice is the one who is going to the arrow. That's the first choice. So he's doing a cheat in this way that he's going to grab the kidney. He's going to grab the kidney. Look, if his first choice is this one and he's not ended up on the cycle, if he has ended up on the cycle, there's no motivation to cheat. Okay, this is not possible. This can't happen. He can't take the cycle process. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. So now he is afraid that the cycle process will happen. So he is saying, okay, I am creating my own cycle. And I will grab maybe my second option rather than my first option. Okay? All right, that's what he is trying to do. Okay, who can grab his kidney? He can only grab his greens. He can do it. Who is here. But if he doesn't cheat right now, then when this cycle process will be processed, then this set will be big, which is leading it. It can be that this victim will come to this hood when this cycle will be processed and this will come to this one. So the green set, the people he can exploit, that gets bigger if he waits. So it's not a good time to cheat now. But then it's never a good time. End of proof. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Very lovely argument. Okay. Just wait. Uh, okay. So now I'm going to tell you uh, something really, really exciting. And then we'll stop uh, if there are. Okay. And this is the work of my friend. Um, and I, since this is a joint work, so I should get the spellings right. Haris, Aziz. So he's a professor in Sydney now, okay, and uh, S. Mackenzie, okay, and this is a featured work in Science News and and you know it's it's really Quanta magazine and all that. So you know this is really top class work, and you know I feel so happy and proud. Um, you know, I always say that 
Haris is one person whom I can introduce to you through his ideas. Okay, and I think that's a great honor to be to have an you know I don't have to say how many papers he has written or what journals he has published in, but his own idea. Okay, so let me explain to you what work he did, and this is also algorithmic game theory. So this is this has to do with cake cutting. Oops. Okay, so uh, what the problem is? You have a cake, all right. And two people want to share the cake, right? But they have different perceptions about the cake, right? So some, one of them may like chocolate, another one may like strawberry, okay? And these may match, these may not match, okay? Only a person can inside tell oh, whether this is. So how do you fairly cut the cake, all right? And um, every culture knows how to do that. One of them cuts. The other one chooses, right? So that uh, sharing has a property which is called NV free. Okay, what NV free means is that after everybody has gotten their shares, nobody is interested in trading with the other. Okay, Every, nobody likes anybody else's share better than what they got. Okay, so they have no NV for anyone. Okay, all right. So this is for two people and this is like in all cultures, I think. You know, bachpan se hume bataya jata tha ke toffee hum baantni hai to ek bhai jo hai na wo divide karega, dusra lega and all that. So, you know, you can find this thousands of years old. But for three people, envy cutting uh, was not known till 1950s. Okay. And John Conway and yeah. Example coming huh? to my mind for these two pieces of cake cutting, mm. and that would be better for ha have clear understanding of this mm. when before going to three. So NV free, if I am the one who is cutting cutting the cake, mm. and there is uh, one small cherry on the top, so if it goes in one part, the person who is just sitting beside me, uh, he will take that cherry on the top and. He is ending up with something better. Huh. Whenever I'll cut, if it is perfectly okay, it's awesome. Else, he will take the bigger piece. So look, okay. So let's say that there are cherries the over here. Okay. Let's say there are cherries over here, and you love cherries. Just one cherry. No, no, and you love cherries. Okay. Let's say there are cherries over here, and you love cherries. So then you'll cut the cake like this. We're not saying we're going to half the cake. You are cutting the cake. So, so look, there is a valuation function here. Okay. okay. <laughs> All right. right. And you integrate the valuation function over this piece and over this piece. And if it comes out equal, you say, oh, that's a fair cut. Okay. Okay. All right. Yeah. So we are not saying we'll cut the, otherwise there's no problem, right? Cut the cake in the middle. Right. Right. The whole idea is, Okay, so you know. Yeah, I got it. Got it? Okay. okay. All right, so for three people, the, pro the solution was uh, given by, uh, I think, Conway and maybe some other. I'm, I'm forgetting this is really bad. I should, I'll put it in the, in the Facebook page. For four and above, it was an open problem. Okay, and Harris solved it for four, and then he solved it for all n. Okay, all right. And let me tell you how many cuts are in his algorithm. It's a finite algorithm. And the number of cuts is n to the 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 n, I think. One, two, three, four, five, six. Only these many cuts. <laughs> OK? All right. So I was. <laughs> Yeah, for N people, <laughs> okay? So it was, it was, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, so I was t t telling this to my students in class and one of the students goes, Sir, cake kharaab ho jayega. <laughs> okay, so I said, son, cake nahi kharaab hoga. There will be no molecules there and Harris will be telling you, cut, cut, cut. <laughs> you know, uh, actually for four, the, look, I mean, 
So 4 to the 4 is uh, 256. All right. So 4 to the 256. This is already more than the number of electrons, mm -hmm. atoms in the universe, and elementary particles in the universe. Mm -hmm. And we've just done a tower of now three. Uh, imagine, you know, physical quantities don't come close to, to, to this, only combinatorial things which we can imagine uh, are there. Graham's number, which we write in arrow notation. I don't understand yet. Tower of, tower of powers, then one arrow, n arrow, then n. So, it means that it represents it. Because n ki power n represents it, n multiplications of n. And n tower n represents it, that n exponentiations of n. So, we can use it. It's a very scary thing. You can see it and you can see it. Yeah, and in some sense, it... it because the, 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 the growth of this function is so fast, that tells me why it took so long mm. to solve this problem. You know, that the solution is inherently mm. difficult. You know, just this, mm. what kind of algorithm will give, throw out a function like this? Mm. Okay, so therefore... So how did he uh, discover this? He uh, crunched numbers and found the quantity for different values of n and then guessed this function? No, 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 no. It's, it's, it's derived theoretical. somehow? It's, it's theoretical, all theoretical work. Yeah, it's not number crunching. Yeah, Harris is, uh, 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 most of all his work is uh, theoretical, proof-based mathematics, mathematical, highly mathematical. Yeah, yeah. So, that was really, uh, I hope that, uh, yeah, it is six, I think, yeah. Okay, so, but what difference does it make, you know, after four, life is same, <laughs> you know, so, so that I'm really happy for, uh, you know, Harris, and Harris is from Lahore, so he's a local hero, uh, he's also a, a ranked uh, tennis player, I think he was, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, any questions? People simply cut four pieces of the cake. I didn't understand. Uh, I think the problem. Oh, um, okay. Uh huh. So, uh, so the thing is, the cake is not uniform, right? One side is chocolate, one side is strawberry, one side is cherries, one side is some nuts. Okay, na? And people's preferences are different. Hai. I hate nuts on my cake, okay? All right, so I, I'd be willing to take a smaller piece, you know. Uh, so he loves cherries, you know. He may actually just take the cherries and run away, right? So, so, so there are different perceptions people have, okay? So you're not just cutting it in four, four pieces exactly, right? This is the kind of problems you run into, especially in inheritance. Right, so if you have a, if you have a, uh, you have your family house is there, right, or or you have even lands that brothers own together, right. So they may have different perceptions of different uh, pieces of the land, right. They may have different expertise, you know. वो आपके लिए बहुत काम की ज़मीन हो लेकिन आपके भाई को नहीं आता उसपे खेतीबाड़ी करना, right. So so, you know, that, that's why. Okay, so, uh, like whenever we are talking about stable marriage problem, mm -hmm. there is a property that uh, boys who are the proposers, they always get technically better choices than the girls. There is a partial ordering there. Yeah. So, how about the patient and the donors over here? No, in this case, you don't have... Uh, Donors and patients are not separate entities, okay? You can just think of them as a, you know, because everybody has found their own donor, right? So they, they are, uh, they are not se separate entities, mm -hmm. okay? In, 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 the, uh, in the stable marriage problem, they are males and females, so they are separate entities, and they both have preferences. See, here only the, Patients have preference list. Donors don't. Donors actually don't care. Right? You know, they have just 
donated their kidney to their brother or their loved one and they just want them to even get a better chance than that mm -hmm. yeah so there is no preference from that side and over there also you have a partial order in the uh, stable marriage and and that's actually a lattice so that is a more structured thing Oh, one comment. The hospital residence problem, previously it used to uh, do the matching so the hospitals were gaining the most. Now they've switched it. Uh, the residence. Yeah. yeah. Sir, this is the cake cutting problem. I mean, the number of cuts, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, दो लोग हैं तो वो कि two to the 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 two cuts करेंगे केक पे नहीं नहीं या फिर ये different possibilities हैं दो cuts करने की नहीं नहीं this this algorithm is for n greater than or equal to four okay n equals two में तो एक cut है ना one cut suffices okay now there are examples people have cooked up in which you need to cut the cake at least n squared times. Otherwise, you know, whatever fewer cuts you give, there is envy or, you know, it doesn't... So, n greater than 4 log hai, agar 4 log hai, to unko 4 pieces chahi hai na? To itne saare pieces ka, wo kis tarah pher unko combine karke 4 banayenge? Oh, oh, wo, sorry, mene, I haven't really prepared. Wo teen wala jo example hai na, wo is tarah se nahi hota ke aapne Two cuts ki and that's it. Usme what happens is, is you know, you... So, for, for example, here's a protocol. A guy can just cut a piece and say, I'm willing to take this. Okay? And he can ask another person. The other person can say, no, 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 wait a minute, minute that's too big. He'll say, oh, if it's too big, then make it small. So, that guy will say, okay, I'm willing to take a smaller piece than this. Okay? That's a protocol. So, isme zyada cuts ho rahe na? Okay, all right. But what you're hoping is the, that you aren't cutting the cake. You're just, uh, you know, it's just a software game, you know, rather than. Uh, but won't the function depend on the number of preferences and uh, elements on the cake? Uh, say that again. Won't the number of uh, cuts depend on the preferences and the number of elements on the cake? For example, uh, flavors and uh, stuff on it, nuts and strawberries. Yeah. yeah, so look, uh, uh, the way this problem is modeled is there is really no cake there, okay? What they do is they, they say that there is a line segment from 0 to 1, okay? And a person's preference is a continuous function, okay? Like this, alright? Okay? So this is, let's say, my personal preference. So I somehow love this side a lot, okay? I, and I love uh, this this piece the least, okay? So this is a, this is given by a function such that the integral of this function is one, okay? So you have n people doing that, and now what you do is you cut actually this line segment. That's how the formal problem is modeled. Recombine कैसे करते हैं फिर उन्हें? They don't talk about it. अच्छा बस cuts करते जा रहे हैं cuts करते जा रहे हैं. Yeah, then they say, so you don't get a consecutive piece. You get a union of intervals. Okay, so what will happen is, yeah, I'll I'll get I may get a part from here, I may get a part from here, I may get a part from here. Actually, you know, really this is cake is 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 in some sense a bad analogy for this. राइट हाँ हाँ बिल्कुल बिल्कुल हाँ 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 uh, homes, uh. everything, and then that might make a better real world analogy. Yeah, yeah, and and so you go on with Harris's 
uh, algorithm, <laughs> okay? Regions <laughs> 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 Continuous, बहुत बड़ा एक region हो जो कि एक बंदा उसको prefer कर ले, छोटे-छोटे different different parts को मिला के prefer करेगा, optimize करना है आपने तो तो फिर इतने आपको cuts की जरूरत पड़ेगी। ये छोटा सा ये, छोटा सा यहाँ से चाहिए, एक cherry यहाँ से चाहिए, एक chocolate का piece यहाँ से चाहिए, फिर ये 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 इस तरह करके, फिर तो हाँ बहुत सारे cuts चाहिए होंगे फिर तो। So yeah, so one of the things is that uh, this was an open problem for a long time. And what Harris has shown us is that, well, there is a finite algorithm. And the next challenge is, can you do better? You know, come up with a better algorithm. Mm -hmm. And know? for some application, can we introduce some value k, where k is the number of partition that you can make? Oh, for example, limit. over here, you can make a limit that, yeah. well, you can't make more than eight portions of a cake are a land. Okay, cake cutting algorithms is a pretty vast subject. You can find books on it. Okay, and there are all kinds of variations. Okay, so uh, I think what is far more practical is rather than saying it should be perfectly NV free, okay, uh, you say, well, we allow some epsilon error. You know, we allow epsilon kind of, uh, kind of, uh, Envy, yes. and 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 then can you come up with so you know then so so, so then it becomes what you call a, a what I call a we are making a living you know your algorithm my epsilon uh, you know uh, this uh, this parameter I'm optimizing but this is better in my method yeah so they they do all kinds of variations limited number of cuts के लिए ये minimum envy निकाले yeah yeah yeah. minimum NV configuration is there eight number of cards ke liye, ke liye kitni minimum NV hai. Yeah. end to the end to the end to end ke liye zero NV hai. Lekin usse kam cards honge, to kuch NV hogi, uska function ban sakta hai, uska yeah, yeah. number of limit ek taraf aur ek taraf yeah. uh, least NV yeah. karke, yeah. n pe ja ke wo zero ho jayegi aur is yeah. tarah karke uh, what I don't get is how is algorithm actually applicable in the real world Agar एक चार बंदे एक केक में दस मिनट लगाएं लोग ये कहेंगे अल्लाह को शुक्र आदो करो खालो केक इट इज़ इट इज़ इन्ट इट इज़ इन्ट बट यू नो द द थिंग इज़ मैथमेटिक्स मैथमेटिशियंस यू नो आर मोर ड्रिवन बाय एस्थेटिक्स यू नो इफ इफ देर इज़ अ फाइनली एन एप्लिकेशन ऑफ़ देर वर्क दैट्स वेरी � अगर किसी को कोई प्रेफरेंस ना हो तब भी यही एल्गोरिथम होगा। Oh, so so you're saying कि ये जो अगर ये जो वैल्यूएशन फंक्शन है, अगर ये फ्लैट हो सबके एक जैसे हो, फिर तो ट्रिवियल है ना प्रॉब्लम। फिर आप उसमें कितने n माइनस वन कट्स मारेंगे, उसको मेजरिंग टेप से मेजर करके। Thank you.